Okay, here we are. Hi everyone. Welcome to the Neo Zone pilot episode. This is going to be a podcast I will hopefully commit to. It will be exclusively on YouTube for now, but I actually did not want to start a podcast in this channel because my videos were basically podcast style because I just talk and I hadn't been showing a lot of visuals lately when it comes to my videos. But there have been some things I feel needed to be separated from my typical the uses and stuff while still being a part of that quote unquote brand. But without further ado, let's start the Neo Zone. To test the waters on what this podcast can be, I'm going to start with something chill before I can get into other topics. I am also thinking of making this branch of my channel more personal, as in diving more into you know about me just in case if anybody cared but like today or at least when i'm recording this i want to just chill and talk about my k-pop journey not as in i am in k-pop but my journey on how i got into k-pop and we can go on from there i was just gonna call it my k-pop history but it sounded weird i will think of a name later but let's talk about how I got into k-pop and anything that follows up until now so this is kind of embarrassing to say but obviously we are not born knowing everything I'm just telling you I genuinely thought as a kid that every country was its own planet like in a solar system and stuff that's Texas education for you so speaking of countries I did not know that Korea was a country until Gangnam Style became popular. I was in fifth grade and someone innocently asked where the song was from. And my teacher said Korea and I legitimately said, what's a Korea? And like many ignorant people, I thought China and Japan were the only Asian countries in the world. But I was so young, so I get a pass. But when I found out there were two Koreas when I was studying geography in seventh grade, my mind was blown. It really messed me up. Anyway, Gangnam Style was my first introduction to K-pop and I thought it was cool, but I thought it was a goofy song, by the way, of the video made it. So I never thought about listening to Korean music seriously. I mean, I barely discovered it. I stuck to my One Direction, Latinx, and divorced dad rock music. We still haven't escaped my fifth grade self because I discovered YouTube at this time. I was not allowed to use the internet until I was in fifth grade, but I always thought YouTube was for educational videos and music videos, but at the age of 11 or whatever I was in fifth grade, I had discovered the YouTuber and content creator aspect of YouTube, and I had discovered the Fine Brothers channel where they do the kids, teens, YouTuber react to certain things, and there was one that was like, YouTubers react to K-pop. And from what I remember from watching it, I hadn't watched it recently. And to be honest, I don't think I plan on watching it back. But it was that they put the most weird music videos. They were trying to mask it like how, you know, like how Japanese commercials and stuff are really wacky and weird to promote like their product. But with K-pop videos, I would have to watch it again to see which music videos they were. And if I recognize them now. So this gave me the idea that K-pop is weird and wacky. Then I went to middle school and there were two things that technically got me into K-pop. And one of them is super embarrassing and the other one is fine. But this first point, it makes me cringe. So in middle school, I was in my emo phase. Well, I am still into my emo phase, but at the time I was watching quote-unquote emo YouTubers and I would watch, um, I want to make it clear, I do not watch or agree with anything this person at all, just in case people needed that disclaimer. I, I used to watch Onision, and if you know, you know, and if you don't, please keep it that way. So there was this series he did where he let his viewers submit their favorite songs and he rates it or whatever and I saw this group of guys singing about overdosing and that group was EXO. 
I also remember seeing a G-Dragon video, but I forgot which one, but I remember Onision vibing to the song and he was like, if you don't like EXO, then what are you doing? Or something like that. And for some reason, I just had to check them out because Onision liked them. And I either was very dumb or wasn't paying attention, but I really thought EXO was an anime because he liked anime. But EXO is a K-pop group and it really scared me because Google showed me like each member and it was the 12 of them, I think. And the photos that Google shows for like each member, it was the most like intimidating photos of them like at the airport and they were like obviously showing that they did not want to be bothered and it didn't help when I didn't understand how to pronounce their names. I checked out their songs like Lucky One and Monster and I was really into them. But it was really hard for me to sing along because I like to sing to the songs I vibe with. But I couldn't so I was like I vibe with them and these songs but um, even though they're bops I don't think it's my thing. But back then I would also watch Niga Higa, Ryan Higa. And he did this K-pop group parody video. It was the second one and uh, I had enjoyed it so much that I went back to the first one and I genuinely liked the song. It was supposed to be a joke but I genuinely liked the songs that they did for their video. So the first one was Ryan and some of his friends. It was Justin Chan, David Cho, Jun Kurian, and Wong Fu Phil if I remember their names correctly. And they made a K-pop group to get girls and one of them writes a song, but it's just Korean gibberish and it was basically a song about poop. It was called Dong Sayade. It was so good. Like, I can't even like joke around. It was really good. I would sing along to it and it was, I really wanted to learn that song. It was just so good, like unironically. Then the second one was kind of parodying the way K-pop members leave their group. So it was called Who's It Gonna Be? And it was the group trying to be like the face of the group. But one of the members didn't really care about going solo. But that's who the company wanted to go solo. And since they hadn't made a new BGA, Boys Generally Asian song. It's funny because it was a play on Girls Generation, like their name. Uh, Anyway, and the stage names were also a twist on big bang members it was it was a whole thing it was very creatively and cleverly uh planned out um i thought it was super entertaining and i was like has an actual k-pop group reacted to this and i searched on youtube and it turned out that a group called top dog reacted to it and i thought their reaction was entertaining and they were promoting their song annie at the time and so i checked it out and i really liked them Though I discovered EXO first, my first group that I stand was Top Dog, a 13-member group that kind of drifted apart, but I love their music. And for a good half a year, or a year, it was just them. Then I discovered that this group was nominated in the American Billboard Awards. It was BTS back in like 2017, and they won. So I thought I'd check them out and maybe learn their names. Biggest mistake many people do when wanting to get into K-pop. And though I really loved being a top class, the top dog fandom, I was really invested in BTS. For a good year, it was just top dog and BTS. I had a dedicated Instagram account for top dog and when I got into BTS, I made one for BTS, and then I started getting into other groups, and I made a new K-pop account, which I run now, the Utizen for all things K-pop. But even though I got into K-pop, I was still, like, kind of in my roots. I was still uh, in my emo, rock, divorce, dad, rock, music phase, and I was like, what if I find a Korean rock band? I want to kind of expand my horizons with Korean music. And two people had recommended me Day 6 back in high school, which still to this day are my top 10 K-pop artists. And that's the thing. They were still considered K-pop, though. 
they did have raw cups. <laughs> My bad. So yeah, Day6 was considered K-pop even though they had rock concepts and stuff, but uh, they were more pop punk, but yeah, anyway. I remember being such a big My Day that on my French freshman year uh, of high school, I would get to school early. My first period was biology. Uh, this was before I had marching band first period, which happened the following years. Uh, so anyway, I ate breakfast at school. Then I'd sit against the wall of my classroom to wait for my teacher to, like, unlock the room. Because I came in super early for no reason. Anyway, um, and I would just binge watch every single day six song. And if I didn't, it was a bad day. No, seriously. And then I discovered GOT7. And it wasn't until GOT7, my fourth group, where I have decided what having an old group was like so i had made my old group got seven my old bias was j-hope still so it was a good half a year to a year of being an agase my sophomore year of high school i became a stay and they quickly became my new old group and for a good year and a half or two it was very confusing with stray kids oh yeah i forgot to say their name i said the fandom name but uh, yeah, I was super into Stray Kids. Stay is the fandom, by the way. Uh, I was very obsessed with this group. I was those stays, those Stray Kids defenders before they got popular. So I'm such a hipster when it comes to Stray Kids because, not to brag or anything, but I was a stay since I Am Who era released in 2018. So it may be no pre-debut, but I feel better knowing that there are people that got into Stray Kids like after 2020. Anyway, <laughs> before I get angry stays in the comments, let's move on. I think after that, I got into VAV, ATs, and NCT. And in early 2019, I finally, after three years of barely discovering them, I finally stand EXO, like officially. I'm sure there were groups in between that I got into, but... Moving a little forward, COVID happened, and that period of time, I finally got the guts to try to stand 17 because I've been so scared to do so because of how many members there were, but then I remembered. I legit stand NCT, who were more, and I got into them no problem. Uh, they were 18 at the time, and my first group ever that I ever stand was also a 13-member group, so what's the problem? Either way, long story short, I did end up getting into them. Um, and I think nearing the end of my senior year, which was 2021, I got into the boys and I low-key kind of stopped getting into new groups. I'm afraid I have reached the end of my K-pop phase, or at least the obsessive part of it, I guess. I have always hated the learning process of a group. But like, literally these days, I just don't really care for learning anybody new. Like, these days, I'll listen to a song and check out the group. It's not like I gotta know everybody's names and their debut day and all of their MBTIs and whether a member can do impersonations of a Korean Spongebob or not. Especially since they are getting younger. I don't know how I feel uh, getting into groups with super young idols and obsess over them. You know what I mean? So, yeah, when you get into a group, you kind of, like, get into this whole process and it takes time but I kind of wish I kind of skipped that process and just knew them but yeah I'm kind of over that so I kind of don't really get into new groups somewhere in between well I've always liked some girl group songs but I never really got into girl groups until now I really like Blackpink, Twice, New Jeans and Lowkey XG but other than that I really don't care for anybody else but I don't hate them just to be clear. Lately, I've been listening to the same songs and artists. And the artists that I can say that I really, really, really stand are like a few people like NCT, The Boys, Seventeen, Kimujin, Twice, Blackpink, New Jeans, and Lucy. But even then, I hadn't been keeping up with everyone. I still haven't heard AO from NCT 127 yet. It was when 
Woojin left Stray Kids, where my whole view of K-pop kind of stopped being so magical is not the word I'm looking for, but so enjoyable. I don't know if it is because I'm getting older, considering I got into K-pop when I was like 14, and I'm now 20, turning 21 this year, but mainly because I became more aware of the toxic side of K-pop, uh, of the K-pop scene, like haters, antis, bullying, racism, scandals, and just mainly the netizens behind it all can just sometimes be very brain dead. So the interactions I've had are so infuriating sometimes. Like after studying and defending Woojin and his situation for the past two years, I kind of got tired. It kind of tired me out from in taking K-pop at all. It's just weird how with him people like made up not only what he accused for but like made up words and definitions as they go like bullying unattractiveness talent just moving the goalposts as they go and just because they say what something means it means it's the definition and if it were that way all as if it were that way all along but i'm just tired of the fandom aspect fans do not understand that they can ruin the ability or someone's ability to have fun in a community and i know some people will say that you're here for the group and not the fans that may be so but you interact with people that have the same interests as you and not everyone is going to interact with the actual aisles so that kind of statement is invalid it happened to me with army moa 18 stay and low-key nct now i fear but I'm trying not to get there because I really like NCT. Because when I tend to like get out of a fandom, I cannot like look at the group anymore. So I really hope it doesn't come like that way to NCT, but I fear it's going to be that way soon. K-pop kind of exhausts me because I get riled up and I either go on Twitter or argue with someone or go on my notepad app to vent about it It just exhausts me and to make my venting into videos is very hard like there have been many topics i wanted to talk about but i just have the issues that i talk about in my catching up video i do want to keep making k-pop content because there are a bunch of topics and subjects i want to talk about and i have had IRL content in mind that I really want to try out but I just hadn't been motivated to do so or don't have time because I'm prioritizing school. It's just hard but that's why I kind of want to make this podcast to be more laid back than I usually am and be more casual and not be pressured to make a classic video when I could just sit and talk. K-pop to me is a big part of my life. I definitely expanded my knowledge about the world. I have became interested in another culture's entertainment. I'm interested in learning the language. I have been learning ever since I got into K-pop because back then K-pop wasn't that popular. So when I would try to find interviews, it would either be not captioned or with horrible quality. So I wanted to stop searching for captions. I wanted to learn, but I have been on and off with it. It's made me more confident and it's made me more insecure in many ways. Like K-pop has made me more confident but more insecure in many ways. It's made me more, it's made me learn more about people and the way they act and overall work. Like with the way that they, you know, act on Twitter. It had also made me more patient and sensitive to things. I have learned many things from the past six years and all in all, I still love it with no doubt. But I guess I have more fish to fry and have other responsibilities and I can't focus on K-pop anymore like I used to. Like seriously, even as boy crazy as I am, I have not been delusional for these K-pop guys anymore. Maybe because I have a crush now and interacted with men my age now and you can actually interact with them i don't feel the need to cry over my faves anymore maybe the i'm falling out of k-pop discussion can be a whole other episode 
and I can gather my thoughts better. But yeah, I think that sums up most of my K-pop journey from 2016 when I got in. But obviously, it was much earlier considering what I had mentioned till now, 2023. There are much more stuff in between, but since it's been six years, I do not remember every single thing. So maybe along the way, I can fill in the blanks for you. Hopefully this episode was interesting. I want to try this method and maybe it can get me back into the swing of things with content creation and stuff. But yeah, we'll see where this takes me. I'll make a formal first episode when I can. Thank you for whoever listened. See you next time.